Well, hello, everyone. And I'm absolutely thrilled to have with me um, uh, Norma Goldman, who is the pioneer, a menopause warrior, uh, who set up the Menopause Exchange, a free newsletter. So I'd like, Norma, to start with, I mean, we're selling, celebrating 25 years. Could you tell us a little bit about your background and what inspired you to start on this journey? Thank you. How I founded the Menopause Exchange, I call a few chance words along the way because it was a fortunate series of events that led me to where I am today. My father was a pharmacist and my parents, uh, and my parents encouraged me to follow him. I studied pharmacy at Chelsea School of Pharmacy in London and did my pre-registration training at John Bell and Croydon, which is a very well-known pharmacy, still in London today. I was invited to attend a short health promotion course in my capacity as a pharmacist, and I was so fascinated by the concept of promoting good health rather than just treating ill health that I enrolled on a three-year master's degree course in health promotion at South Bank University. I qualified as a health promotion specialist and received my master's degree. During my master's degree, I wrote an assessment of a menopause course for a fictitious women's group. And then unexpectedly, I met a pharmacist with whom I'd worked. When he asked me about my career, I said I was thinking of changing direction and I was currently interested in the menopause. And a week later, he contacted me with a fantastic opportunity. Would I present a talk on the menopause in a pharmacy in Harrow, Middlesex? And I still have a copy of that presentation. And that's how, and that's how it all began. How exciting. It's funny about chance encounters along the way, isn't it? So having, it is. having been inspired to sort of be a, a health educator, how did you, what thought, what light bulb went on in your head to start the menopause exchange? And could you, I'm sure there must have been challenges in the early stages of the startup. Whilst carrying out research on my presentation to the pharmacy, I met a librarian who said that she'd seen a menopause newsletter in a library abroad. And since she was going through the menopause, she wished that someone would publish a newsletter in the UK. I'd already identified a lack of impartial information on the subject, so she gave me an idea. And with the help of my daughter, Victoria Goldman, who's a health journalist, I founded the Menopause Exchange in 1999 to launch the Menopause Exchange quarterly newsletter, and she is the editor. We emailed the Menopause Exchange newsletter for free, and we just celebrated our 25th anniversary. So I was a pioneer in the world of the menopause when I founded the Menopause Exchange. The aim of the Menopause Exchange in the early stages and now is to provide well-researched, um, impartial, up-to-date and practical information on the perimenopause, menopause, postmenopause, and related health topics. And the challenges were that we have wanted to remain completely independent and not sponsored by any other companies or organisations, and we still are. In addition to those going through the menopause, the Menopause Exchange newsletter is emailed to partners, healthcare professionals, complementary therapists, journalists. So it's been important to keep the information in the newsletter and on our website relevant to all of these. We have a lot of interest from journalists and publications and our um, website address is menopause-exchange.co.uk. Another challenge has been that in addition to menopausal health, to provide information on a wide range of women's health and general health topics, such as thyroid problems, digestive problems, headaches and migraine, nutrition, heart and bone health, eye health, etc., and to find appropriate writers for these articles. It's important to stay attuned to the concerns of women facing the menopause and their families. We aim to design the information so that women can make informed decisions about their menopausal health and well-being. We look at symptoms which include physical, psychological and menopausal urogenital problems. We will have an article on the latter in the winter 2024-2025 issue. Topics include self-help lifestyle tips, HRT, non-hormonal prescribed treatments for menopausal flushes and sweats, complementary therapies and medicines and nutrition. 
I think that's really absolutely fascinating. And I'm sure that, um, you know, you've alluded already that how menopause care has evolved. And, you know, I I'm, I'm getting on a bit and I'm very much aware that we've gone through the, the WHI initiative and we've gone through lots of challenges with getting menopause out there. So how do you think that conversation uh, has, a ro has, it, has evolved over the last 25 years? We've, we've seen so much happen, haven't we, Norma? Yes. So before I founded the Menopause Exchange, or when I worked as a pharmacist, I don't remember any significant discussions about the menopause and prescriptions for HRT. And when I started the Menopause Exchange, it was a taboo subject that no one talked about, and certainly not publicly. Information was only created by drug manufacturers, and that did focus on HRT. There was little information about lifestyle factors or mental health, associated with that time of life. There was nothing to normalize it as part of a woman's life. Conversations changed. It's much more out in the open, but that's only happened over the last five years or so, often celebrity led. So there's a significant increase in awareness and education about menopause. More resources are available now, including books, online articles, and educational programs. The stigma surrounding menopause has decreased. It's now more openly discussed in the media, workplaces and social circles. Many companies and organizations have started to implement menopause friendly policies and provide support to their employees. They're providing menopause information to line managers, HR teams, menopause champions, health and safety officers and others, for example, occupational health departments, and those responsible in the workplace for the well-being of employees. So there's been an amazing increase in interest in the menopause in the workplace. I think you've alluded to, and I think we, we, time is limited, so I, 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 you've talked about menopause being holistic with you know, not just talking about HRT, but I am aware that you've got a broad panel of experts that contribute to the menopause exchange uh, from lots and lots of different areas. And um, just because I want to, sort of, I'm wary of time and I want to get the last few questions in as well. Um, I think we, there's a whole list of, if we look at your website, which you've pointed at us to already, um, we can get information on who your panel of experts are, me being one, of course, which is how we met. So I think that's a, a good resource to, to direct people to. Um, I think the, um, what I think that I'd like to talk about, what is your biggest frustration about what's going on in menopause? And how would you like that to see change? Many women wanted help and advice and there wasn't very much information available. And now there is so much information available. It should be evidence-based where possible. Women don't always know what and who to trust. I'd like to see that information given is well-researched, impartial and practical. And this should include topics on symptoms experienced, including less common ones like generalized itching, that is formication. And when I speak to women and mention the large range of symptoms, someone will say that they didn't realize some symptoms, for example, formication can be due to the menopause. So information should be available on all ways of coping with the perimenopause and menopause. And this should include aspects like how to dress some fibers for bedding, the use of fans, what foods and drinks to avoid, physical activity, HRT, non-hormonal prescribed treatments for hot flushes and night sweats, complementary therapies and medicines and nutrition. And we did in fact include an article on bedding and clothing for the menopause in a recent issue of the Menopause Exchange newsletter. I think that's great. And I think I think it's fair to say that you, know, you and I are women on the same page because we really, really get the holistic approach. You know, as yeah. you know, I'm a Absolutely. doctor, I prescribe MHT, but at at Menopause Consortium or TMC, as we call it now, we have a holistic approach and we have lots of specialists that support our approach to that. And I think we need to get that message out there that menopause isn't just about prescribing it a, a medication and I totally agree with that looking ahead what will you are your hopes for women's health and um, particularly on our post-reproductive life in an ideal world non-medicated options for the menopause including lifestyle changes are suggested first and lifestyle changes of course aren't enough for everyone depending on their symptoms 
but not everyone wants to take HRT. So it's important to include non-hormonal prescribed treatments for menopausal flushes and night sweats, which are only available on prescription as an option for some patients. Ideally, women would know that every GP surgery has a menopause expert, doctor or nurse, or even a regular menopause clinic. There needs to be a holistic approach through GP surgeries and primary care. So it's not focusing on any specific management approach. It needs to be an individualized approach suitable for each woman. Also improved access to healthcare needs to be convenient that women could see a healthcare professional specializing in the menopause more easily, even just popping into a clinic on the high street without an appointment. Community pharmacies would be ideal. They have a new contraception service and the new pharmacy first scheme, but this would all take time and money to set up and many pharmacies are closing due to a lack of funding. I'm looking forward to more options for dealing with, quest um, with symptoms. Recently, we've seen the introduction of a new type of product, Fisolinitant. We include information on, on the news page in the Men's Exchange newsletter. Organizations and companies, that is workplaces, need to be made more aware of how they can support perimenopausal and menopausal employee. In fact, I wrote an article, Menopause in the Workplace, in a past issue of the Menopause Exchange newsletter. Many workplaces have a menopause policy. Workplaces should think about hot flushes and how windows, temperature control, ventilation, air conditioning and open offices can affect menopausal women. But if buildings are old, it may be impossible or difficult to make adjustments. Fans can be provided with regards to menopausal employees that one solution will not fit all. Some workplaces have a flexible working policy that can help women with night sweats. Impartial practical information needs to be available not only to those experiencing the menopause, but also to employers, line managers, HR teams, menopause champions and colleagues. What is important is how line managers, etc., should discuss menopausal symptoms confidentially and without embarrassment. I hope that workplaces that have menopause support groups, which hold meetings on a regular basis, ensure that women are aware that what one attendee mentions as having helped her symptoms may not be appropriate for herself if she has medical conditions or is taking medication. They should be made aware that there are menopause clinics, NHS and private in many parts of the UK. Information needs to be given to these groups by people who are capable of giving professional and accurate information and advice on anything to do with the menopause. Absolutely. I'd like to see an increase in training available for doctors and pharmacists on the wide range of HRT products, something which I, who qualified as a pharmacist, am very interested in. Also for pharmacists, knowledge of the non-hormonal medicines, non-hormonal medicines usually used for other medical conditions that can be used to help hot flushes and night sweats. More research and on the use of complementary therapies and medicines, looking at their suitability for women with medical conditions and taking medication. And we do include research projects on the news page of the Menopause Exchange newsletter. That's great and fascinating, Norman. Thank you for taking time to join us today. I think we've come an awful long way uh, on our menopause journey as menopause warriors, but I think we've got a, some way to go. But you no, know, we will carry the bat on for as long as we can. And thank you for joining us today. You're very welcome. I've really enjoyed speaking to you. Thank you Thank so you. much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.